So a few months back, I reached out to Ben, asking if he wanted to play a game of plus one, minus two, Urban Cycling Edition. To which he responded, of course. So the way this works is we each go for a bike ride in our respective cities, in this case Toronto versus the fake London, and we film the ride. And then we go through each other's rides, and for every moment of bike friendliness, we add one point. For every moment that makes it dangerous to cycle, we take away two points. And then we see who has the most points at the end. Starting off with Ben's ride, Starting off with minus two, because the speed limit is 50 kilometers per hour, and we know that's unsafe. Plus one, because there's a bus stop, which means there's public transit. Plus one for the bike lane. Minus two, because there's no leading pedestrian interval, which is dangerous. Plus one, because the speed limit lowered to 40 kilometers per hour. Minus two, because there's lots of snow in the bike lane. This tree is fairly similar to a street near my house, and it feels pretty safe as long as people don't speed. So this is voiceover Shua, letting you know that I'm getting a cold, so my voice might sound weird. Minus two for the amount of black ice in the bike lane. Now let's just skip ahead here a little bit. I feel like this video should also show how easy it is to bike in the winter, especially on the nice sunny days like today. Minus two because the bike lane doesn't continue through the intersection. Minus two, because there's no race pedestrian crossing. Even though that's walking infrastructure, it still slows down cars and keeps us safe. Minus two, because the bike lane doesn't continue through the intersection, when on the adjacent side it does. And that's inconsistent. Minus two because the bike lane doesn't go through the intersection and minus two again because the bike lane gets really narrow. Minus two because the bike lane is in really bad condition and the paint's just falling apart. Like I'm not even sure if there's a bike lane there. Minus two again because you can barely see the bike lane here. It's even worse than before. Plus one, because the bike lane is actually visible now. Minus two, because the bike lane doesn't go over the railroad crossing. Minus two again, because the bike lane ends and doesn't go through the railroad crossing. Plus one, because the bike lane continues through the intersection. That was glass, dang it. That was glass, and yes, dang it. And yes, I'm gonna give a minus two for that. Plus one, because the crosswalk is painted bright colored. And plus one again, because the bike lane goes through the intersection. Plus one, because the bike lane seems to be properly maintained. Minus two because there is no sidewalk. Now, like I said earlier, having that walking infrastructure can still help slow down cars and make biking safer. Minus two because of the absurdly long light cycle and the fact that we're not waiting for anyone to get out of the intersection, we're just waiting for the light to change. Minus two 
minus two because of the gargantuan intersection. It does not need to be this big. So we're coming up on Home Depot, but I have to give minus two because the parking lot is bigger than the Home Depot itself. Looks like Ben is looking for a bike rack. The bike racks are? Bike rack, yeah, the bike rack here is just around the corner on okay, the other side okay. of the vestibule there up against the wall. Oh, right over there? Okay. Yep. Cool, thank you so much. Bye. Look at all those carts left there graciously by Home Depot's customers. I'm not going to give minus two for this because this isn't the city's fault. It's just some um, people's fault. It doesn't look like it's bolted down. You are correct. It is not. You know what that means. Minus two. On that note, we're going to finish up with the London ride. The final score was minus 30. Let's move on to the Toronto ride. Off to a good start with plus one for the bike lane. I just want to highlight how important it is that cycling infrastructure not only is safe, but also feels safe. Like here, I feel safe and it's really nice. Minus two because there's no bicycle or pedestrian detection, which means the light doesn't detect you if you're anything except a car. Plus one for the crosswalk at the bus stop, because I think it's important for pedestrians to have right of way over cyclists. Plus one because the bike lane continues through the intersection. Minus two because the light doesn't detect cyclist and you have to use what some people call a bag button. Now what I do like about this intersection is there's a dedicated place for cyclists to cross. I think it makes it a lot safer. Still not as safe as a protected intersection, but better than nothing. Just a reminder to my future self, minus two here because they're blocking the bike lane but they're already taking up enough room on the road to block the road that... So it wouldn't make a difference if they just parked on the road and let the cyclists This do. is Editing Shua here to say, you know what that means, minus two. Minus two here, because they could have put the trees on the outside and had it as an extra barrier and protection to cyclists. I feel like the green paint in the intersection really adds a lot of safety, and I feel like more bike lanes should do it instead of just disappearing when you get to an intersection. Minus two because this intersection doesn't detect bikes. Plus one because the speed limit lowered to 40 kilometers per hour. Minus two for the gargantuan intersection. It sucks for everyone. It sucks for pedestrians. It sucks for cyclists. It even sucks for drivers. Minus two for the beg button. I don't know if you can see it there, but there's a painted bike gutter, and paint doesn't really do anything against two-ton metal death machines that are moving at 60 kilometers per hour. So yeah, minus two for that. Minus two, because cars have to turn over the unprotected bike lane to make a right turn. Minus two for the six-lane strode. And now we enter a gargantuan parking lot. This parking lot is so huge, we still have a kilometer left, and all of that kilometer is in this parking lot. So yeah, minus two for that. So 
So you can see here, we're coming up on Home Depot, and I'm looking for bike parking. Is there any bike parking anywhere? Plus one for the bike rack. I really like that it's bolted to the ground. And that concludes our Toronto ride with a final score of negative 16. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to check out Ben's video and Not Just Bikes and Shifter's videos on plus one, minus two. I'll see you in the next one.